Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another CD to play for you. Today's CD is Superman with Batman and Robin from 1945 Story 9. So let's get started. Come on, Pep. The super delicious cereal presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! And today it would seem that all odds are against his friend, Lois Lane. Lois Lane's startling, almost twin-like resemblance to Dixie Lamar, member of a notorious confidence ring and accused of murder, has placed the young Daily Planet girl reporter deep in the shadow of the electric chair. A dangerous web of circumstantial evidence has been woven about Lois by Dr. Bly, cunning leader of the confidence ring. And she is now being held in the city jail, charged with the crime Dixie Lamar committed. While the famous Batman combs the amusement park outside Metropolis, where Lois's trouble started, Clark Kent and Perry White, editor of the Daily Planet, are at the city jail. Following an unsatisfactory discussion with Inspector Henderson, chief of police, they have been permitted five minutes alone with Lois in her cell. As they enter, the barred door clangs shut behind them. Lois, seated on her cot, looks up, dazed and uncertain. Mr. White. Oh, you poor kid. What have they done to you? They, they keep saying that, that, oh, Clark. No, no, no. There's nothing to worry about, Lois. Believe me. I'll fight this to the Supreme Court. I'll spend every cent I've got and every cent the planet's got. You see, we're all behind you. One hundred percent. If that horse's neck Henderson thinks he can get away with this, he's crazy. Well, we've only got five minutes, Chief. Don't waste them getting mad at Henderson. I don't have to get. I am. Lois. Yes. We want you to tell us everything that happened tonight from the time you left the Daily Planet office. I, I don't remember everything. All right, then, as much as you do remember. Well, Jimmy and Dick and I went to Playland. Yeah, the amusement park? Yes. Well, who's Dick? I know, it's Dick Grayson. Go on, Lois. We, we got into a boat, and uh, uh, there was a, a dark tunnel, and, and skeletons. Well, what's she talking about? The River of Horrors, one of the amusement park concessions. Yes, Lois. And then, then someone grabbed me. I tried to scream, but there was a, a cloth on my mouth. It was, it was sweet. Terribly sweet. Oh. I couldn't move, but I could hear voices. And there were two men. They carried me through a narrow place with a, a low ceiling. Yes. And, uh, and then everything went black. That's all you remember? No. There was a house and a man named, named Happy. He played a phonograph, a piano. He played a phonograph and a piano? No, the record. It was a piano record. Oh. Where was this house? I don't know, but I could see the light. Light? What light? The light. The, the light, you the know. The amusement park light? Yes. Oh. And then another man came. And the first one. And then the photograph was... Happy? Yes, he called the other one dark. Uh -huh. I tried to get to the window, Clark, but they stopped me. That's all. Uh, what do you mean, that's all? Well, that's all I remember until they brought me here. Well, how did you get to the Red Devil? What? Red, Red Devil, Lois. That's where the police picked you up. At the Red Devil Cafe. I don't know. Look, is, is that your dress you're wearing? My dress? Yes, it's red. Red? I don't have any red dresses. Well, what about the mink coat? The mink coat? You were wearing a mink coat when the police arrested you, Lois. Oh, that's funny. I don't see anything funny about it. A mink coat. Oh, that's very funny. And she's not funny. <laughs> Lois. Yes? Did you ever hear the name Dixie Lamar? Dixie who? Lamar. L-A, I guess. Capital M-A-R-R. -R. I can't remember. You've Clark. got to remember, Lois. It's the moon. Oh, that's right. I, I can't. can't. She's sick. Now, you better let me call her. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Lois, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm going to tell you because it's important. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Good. Now, to begin with, the police are holding you for murder. Oh, I... Murder? Clark! Did you say murder? Yes. They claim you're the Dixie Lamar who shot and killed a federal agent in a hotel lobby. But that's now, let ridiculous. Me finish. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They found the murder gun in your apartment with your fingerprints on it. They found but the they... key to a safe deposit box containing $60,000 in cash. You know well, that I have no... And they found some telegrams from a notorious gangster now dead addressed to Dixie Lamar. God, what are you talking about? Those things are facts, Lois. At least they were presented to us as facts. And the gangster's name was Ace Scarlatti. You know him? I never heard of him. All right, let's go back a minute. Why did you refuse to tell me where you were going when you left the office early this evening? I did? Yes, you did. You 
said something very important had happened to you while the chief, Jimmy, and I were up north. But you refused to tell me what it was. Something important. You also said I'd soon learn I wasn't as good a reporter as I thought I was. Well, now, you know you did, Lois. Oh, Kent, will you stop trying to pin her down? Oh, Chief, can't you see she's not well? Are you totally blind? She's well enough to tell me why. As she left the office, she said, so long, Clark. See you in jail. What? You remember that, Lois? No, I, I don't. Well, I don't. if she did say it, she was just kidding. Yes, I must have been kidding. I wonder. Huh? What's that? Never mind. Now, Lois, these two men you mentioned, Happy and, and uh, Doc. Doc, and Happy and Doc, did either of them have white hair and wear dark glasses? No, that was Mr. Hemingway. Huh? Who's Mr. Hemingway? He was, the, he, he was the press agent of the amusement park. That's the bird we were chasing, Batman and I. When was this? Early this evening. How did you happen to meet this Mr. Hemingway, Lois? He was waiting for me. Where? At the amusement park. Oh, did you have an appointment with now, him? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Ken. Who do you think you are? The district attorney? I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this, Chief. Lois's answers are too vague. They'll never stand up in court. court? Oh, who's talking about court? You heard what Inspector Henderson said. They've got an open and shut case. I'll open and shut him. Now, don't you worry, Lois. I'll get the best lawyer in the country. But I haven't done anything. Have I? All right, all right. Let, let's get back to Mr. Hemingway. Did you have an appointment to meet him at the amusement park, Lois? I can't remember. Well, how is it you can remember some things and not others? I don't know. Well, that's no answer. If she doesn't know, she doesn't know. Well, she's got to know in front of a jury. Will you stop talking about courts and juries? And now, and look, and Chief, wait a minute, will you? Lois, the story doesn't make sense. There's something phony about it. Oh, oh. You think she's guilty? What? You think she must? Now, don't put words into my mouth. All I said was... Uh, Okay, let's go. You lead the way. Anyone around? No, nobody. We have. 
have to worry about. All right, follow me. There's a short winding staircase and a room at the top of it. I guess Hanson used it as an office. I noticed a desk and a typewriter. Okay, here we are. We better take another look around. All clear. All right, can we go? Close the door behind you. Right. Say, where's the light coming from? It's the room at the head of the stairs. I left it on. Oh, I'll be careful here. It's a loose board on one of the steps. I almost broke my neck coming down. I see it. Kent, where do you suggest we take him, sir? I don't know. You think he'll talk? Oh, I know he will. He's just the kind of half-baked rat who'll squeal to save his own skin. If he hadn't remembered that gun in his desk drawer, I would have gotten the whole story out of him. Okay, here we are. That's the room. See? Just where I left him on the floor. Yes. But I don't think he'll talk. Well, what do you mean, Kent? It's a little difficult for a man to talk with a knife in his back. What? Particularly when he's dead. Clark Kent and Batman circle the bound and gagged figure on the floor. In the light of a green shaded desk lamp, they can see the curved bone handle of a hunting knife protruding from between Joe Hanson's shoulder blades. Evidently, someone else suspected Hanson was about to talk. Someone who had a great deal to hide. Now, what of Lois Lane accused of murder? How can she possibly establish an alibi? Don't miss next week's exciting episode when Lois goes on trial for her life. When Superman finds himself unable to break the cunning web woven by the master criminal, Dr. Bly. When finally, in desperation, Superman, Batman, and Robin join hands in a fight to the finish. Be sure to listen Monday, same time, same station. Tune in, same time, same station for... The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday. Same time, same station. By the makers of that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in the Superman DC publications. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. So that was Superman with Batman and Robin, Story 9, from 1945. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.